Good morning, everyone. It's Monday again. Uh, the lockdown, the ECQ to be extended. So uh, the situation is not, looks like the get well because the, we, we reach more than 14, 15,000 a day, the positive of coronavirus, the Delta virus or some there also. However, all the thing happen in this world is the God is plan. The God create us, He sent us to this world, and then He guiding us, He protect us. So in any situation, we do not lose the hold the hand of the God. And remember the God is with us. Amen. That is the only way to get the power and we can sustain under this kind of difficult situation. But we have to trust God. He give the way. He give the load. So let us stay with Him. Amen. Today, the story of the daily bread is the title is the, a sad story. Sad story. Yeah, we have a lot of sad story. But in the Bible, especially the great king David has the one stain in his life that God has very sad. That is the story of the uh, Bathsheba, Uriah, and David. That is the starting today of the uh, second Samuel chapter 11, verse two and five. Everybody know this story in the many times. And let us read uh, this story. One evening, David got up from his bed and walked around on the roof of the palace. From the roof, he saw a woman bathing. The woman was very beautiful, and David sent someone to find out about her. The man said, Isn't it this Bathsheba, the daughter of the Elaine, and the wife of Uriah, the Hittite? Then David sent messenger to get her. She came to him and he sleep, slept with her. She has purified herself from the, un, uh, her uncleanness. Then she went back home. The woman conceived and sent word to David saying, I am pregnant. You know the King David, he's the great king among the Israel. When was David was the territory of Israel was the biggest. So still, the older Israel people, the great king, the David, they want to go back to that era. The Israel has the big power. The David is the second king of Israel. The first one is Saul, and second is the king David. He, when he became the king, the capital of Israel was the Hebron. And he was there about seven years plus. And he moved the capital of Israel to Jerusalem. And he was there about 33 years. So King David uh, was in the position of the king is about 40 years. But today the story is in Jerusalem. When he arrived to Jerusalem and when he stayed there, he saw the one lady, the name is the Bathsheba. And then he got it. Even he knows he is the wife of someone, her, his step, the one of the general, name is the Uriah. It is the soul, uh, not the right thing, but the this kind of thing is the that time to David is kind of happy story because he achieved his desire. But though this also become the sad story to our Almighty God. 
because that one is become the verse same the chapter chapter eleven the verse twenty to six and twenty seven is coming out. Uh, when Uriah's wife heard that her husband was dead, she mourned for him. After the time of the mourning was over, David had her brought to his house, and she became his wife and bore him a son. But the thing David had done displeased the Lord. But the things David had done displeased the Lord. It's the sad story to the God. And what happened? God still loved David. So he sent the prophet, his messenger, name is the Nathan. And the chapter 12, the verse 1 is starting, it's like this. The Lord sent Nathan to David. This is the Nathan. Why is God sent the Nathan to David? The Nathan rebuked the David. Rebuked the David. So he go. He went to uh, David. He talked. He sent the message of the God. And then what happened? That the uh, uh, verse twelve, uh, uh, chapter twelve, verse ten also said. Now, therefore, the sword will never depart from your house, because you despise, despise me, and took the wife of Uriah, the Hittite, to be your own. The Nathan pointing out, and then God is said. But God's grace, the redemption is possible. Still, the David has chance. God give the chance. And if we lead the father, we encounter David is a profound the dependence. We could find in the verse thirteen. Of chapter 12. Then David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. I have sinned against the Lord. I think the when the Nathan is to tell this the message to David, David knows who is God. David acknowledges and understands the God, how God is selecting him as the king of the Israel, how he was the wonderful all his life up to that moment. So he knows the, the power of God and he knows who is God, Jehovah. So he immediately kneeled down and asked the forgiveness. He immediately, his action is the immediately, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan, is said, continues, Nathan replied, the Lord has taken away your sin. You are not going to die. David was very afraid. God punished him to die. But Nathan is said, the Lord has taken away your sin. That meaning, Lord is forgive you, and you will not be dying. You know, that is kind of the forgiveness is come by the God. But the forgiveness not only forgiveness, but there is a still the penalty. The penalty is come from the next verses, the 14 and 15. But because of by doing this, you have made 
the enemies of the Lord. You have made the enemies of the Lord show utter contempt. The son born to you will die. David did not die, but the son between the Bathsheba and David, the not proper, not the proper relationship as she pregnant, that son is talking about. After Nathan has gone home, the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife, the Bathsheba, had born to David, and he become ill. And finally, later on, the, the child, the baby, is dying. You see, <clears throat> even we asking the forgiveness and repent, the God asking some responsibility, the judgment is coming. We got the forgiveness by grace of God, but there's also penalty. So today, the what we lead, the story of the David. This is the one of the, David has a great, so many performance, the very good king, but this is the one of the very big stain in his life. Yes, you and me, we have a, this kind of stain. What kind of stain you have? Think about it. I think we have a many in before, but still we are alive today. That is the grace of God. By grace of God, He saved us. So, what we learn from uh, this story? This is a sad story to God. But what we learn is come out. Number one, everyone in this world, even Christian, who accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, and he's the born again, I'm now okay, clean, but everyone still could have sinned by their own desires. Everyone could have sinned by their own desire. What is desire? The desire is come from evil. It looks like the I feel, but who giving this kind of the temptation is the evil. We could not we could not see that immediately. That just, uh, I like it, I want it, I need it. But that is starting that kind of thinking from evil attempt us. Why? The one main target, goal of evil is make us separate from God by all means. Especially when we do this kind of sin, when we have a certain power to abuse. And then the kind of the temptation is come very easy. So we have to be very careful about this. But also what we have to remember the number two is when God points out our sin. It is important to immediately repent and ask for forgiveness. God normally reminding his children, but we used to oversee. We do not or we pretend not to listen. We just follow what we want. 
So, when God point out our sin, it is very important to immediately repent. God, I'm sorry. I am so sorry. And ask for his forgiveness. How? God pointing us. How? With piercing conscience. What speaks through others' mouths. God really is the, you know, poke, piercing. And I feel it. My conscience is telling me, no, you are wrong. You stop it. Something inside is stop me. Or if I do not feel because of my heart hurt, my belly thick the face, God speak that message through some your friend, some your people around you, other people's mouths, like the Nathan, messenger of God, to tell the David. This thing happened. I truly believe you have the same experience like this, right? But how many times have we refuse to listen to those our friends, our parents, our Barkada to tell us, but we still insisting, never mind, and we push through. God loves us, so He gave us the chance to come back after repent. However, In order to, in order not to make the God is very sad, we should not lose against the evil also. When this kind of temptation, this kind of desire is come us, what we have to do? Immediately, let's kneel down to God and pray for the divine power of the Holy Spirit to make us against the, those the evil thought. God is really love us. He do not want to see we really fail, fall down by evil. We have to believe and trust God. This kind of the temptation, evil attack, is not one time, continuously until we die. Standing in front of God. This is the every day is happen to everyone. Think about it. Whether we make our God is very sad because of us, our action. Whether we have to make him very displeased. Or we really make him very happy to see our life to follow his love let's pray to everyone father god we had many brokenness and failures in our life beaten by evils we don't know what to do with all those the brokenness we see in our world. Also those the brokenness in us. Could you 
will you shine your light and heal us? God, guide us, protect us until we stand in front of you. You are only God. You are Father. Sorry for our wrongdoing. It's become our stain. But you are only one who clean out that stain in our life. Forgive our sins. We pray your Son, our Lord and Savior, in Jesus Christ's name, all God people said, Amen. Amen. Everyone, be strong. Stay with God. Amen.